Hey everybody, Jack Lewis Painting here, and we're back for part two of working on the brand new Ragnar Blackmane. Got the model right here. In the previous video, we did all of the basic airbrush work to set up a lot of our colors on the model. And in this video, we're going to block in the rest of our colors and get into oil washes. First color I'm using is just some black paint on some of these armor panels and different items on the model like the rubber joints and stuff like that. So I'm just taking this time to black all of those out. Easy, simple base coats, nothing special. With all those areas cut in now, I'm going to do a single airbrush highlight on a couple of pieces, like his big shoulder pan and the hair on his head, his namesake black mane. Just going to take a mid-tone gray, you know, user's choice here. Just do a little radial pop highlight right on that shoulder pad, being careful not to paint outside the lines, getting the overspray on the rest of the model. And then I'm going to highlight the shinier aspects of where the light would play off of his hair and I'm using my thumb as a mask here to get kind of the top of his head so I don't spray gray onto his nice skin colors that we airbrushed in the last video. After that I'm going to grab some light neutral gray and this is going to be our little shiny pop highlight color for the hair. It may seem like the hair color is skewing to uh, more of a grayish color with the way that the airbrushing looks right now. But trust me, after we get our oil washes put on there, it will look like black hair with a nice soft highlight on top of it rather than grayish hair. Next step is gonna be all of our gold and I'm pulling out an old favorite Viking gold from scale 75. What a great color to paint all the gold for your Space Wolves. It's that really nice full bodied reddish gold that really goes with the look of the Space Wolves. So I'm just going to cut all of that in here. I'm just working on the one bit of shoulder pad trim that is visible on the armor. And then I'm going to transition over into doing the wolf symbol on his shoulder pad and any other little gold bits and bobs around the armor. When doing embossed detail like this wolf on a shoulder pad, I'm making sure that my paint is nice and thin, nice and smooth, and I don't have very much paint in my brush. I want to barely touch the surface of the model with my brush, so that way the tip or side of my brush is not going to skip off of that embossed detail and hit the nice airbrushed shoulder pad field that we want to stay nice and clean. So just keep that in mind. Take your time with this. You know, this is a character model, so I'm not really rushing with it. I am taking my time. Once all that gold is cut in, we're going to work on his chain sword. I've got some yellow ochre, and I'm just going to do a very simple, solid base coat on the blade area of the chain sword. Just cut that in. And then we're going to give it a nice, clean airbrush highlight to really pop that yellow out. I like yellow ochre. It's a nice, full-bodied yellow Again, this is a more earthy yellow color that goes with the Space Wolves theme. And it also base coats really nicely, so I like using it. And to pop that yellow out, we've got some golden yellow. This is a really bright, sunny yellow, very similar to Flash Gits. And I'm just going to put that in the airbrush with a little bit of Flow Improver and carefully airbrush a slight kind of 50 percent down the blade gradient with that yellow kind of feather it out towards the bottom just to really pop it and make it look a little more interesting than just flat yellow going for kind of a hyper highlight on that just because it is his famous sword and I want it to look really cool on the table now that that's done we're going to do all of our steel colors I could have gone darker with this steel more gunmetal color but 
I decided that I wanted it to be more of a neutral uh, medium steel color, which is why we're going with thrash metal. Uh, it's still base coats pretty good. Just might need to take a little bit more time than with the uh, darker metallics. And I'm just going to base coat in everything that I want to be a steel metallic on the model. Once that steel was cut in, it was basically just cutting the rest of your colors. Uh, we've got like some ammo pouches and the little tooths and claws and things like that on the model. Really, really easy stuff, so I didn't feel like it warranted going over in the video. Just take your time, cut in those base colors, and you're good to go. And what I'm doing right now is I'm actually sealing up all of that paint with a gloss varnish to get ready for our wash. I want that gloss varnish to protect everything and a really nice slick surface for our wash to sort of slip and slide all over the model and stay extra clean. And for the wash, we're going with the Mr. Hobby weathering color system. Got some multi black here and I'm not preloading the model with that solvent like you've seen me do a number of times. Because you have the gloss varnish, the model is already very slick and it's going to lead to a much cleaner wash overall. So I'm just gonna slather this multi-black onto the model really heavily and then go into the cleanup process. Once I feel I have enough wash on the model, I'm gonna start putting my brush and loading it up with solvent. And then I'm going to be moving that all over the model to dilute and break up the full bodied wash on there and help it flow into all the recesses. And I'll also be using the brush to wick away any excess wash because I don't want it pooling up anywhere. And I will also be using it to blend out our oil wash. One of the main reasons I really like this oil wash system is because of the look that it gets. It's a very soft uh, shade on the model because of the way that you can blend it out. It will have a slight color filter over the entire model, but where you clean it up and then blend it into the recesses creates a really, really soft shadowed fade that I really prefer. You can see me right now, I'm just using the solvent in my brush to clean up different areas especially on the areas with lots of complex detail, like this wolf pelt where all that wash just wants to sit in all those details. You gotta break it up and dilute it a little bit, move it around and wick away any excess so that we can see our nice airbrushed wolf pelt. Especially when I clean up areas like the pop highlights on the armor, that really bright yellow on the chain sword, and places like his face because we want the nice details on this new sculpted face to pop out because it looks really, really nice. I also wanted to show you another thing you can do. I've got some Q-tips here and what I like to do is dip the Q-tip in our solvent and then touch that Q-tip to a piece of paper towel so it kind of is damp but not like dripping wet with the solvent because we want to use this as sort of an eraser and a blending tool like you can see me do on his little wolf pelt cape places on his armor things like that where i can very gently touch the model and it's going to clean off those flat surfaces whilst leaving the wash in the details so you can have a really nice ultra clean oil wash look going on The one thing you gotta be really careful of when using these Q-tips is that as you use them more, they will degrade and you can have those little cotton stringies kind of left onto the model, especially if it gets caught on like a sharp detail or something. So really make sure that before you seal your model with a varnish to lock in all this oil wash, you kind of do a once over on the model to make sure that none of those little cotton stringies are left over because if you varnish over them, there's a good chance it's gonna be stuck to the model and you'll have to like peel it off and that won't look very good. So just be careful of that. And here he is, this is post wash. All the wash is dried up. He still looks a little shiny from the gloss varnish and the oil wash can dry a little shiny sometimes, it has some oily residue to it. 
which is the main reason that I like to lock it in with a varnish. When it's fully dry, it's really hard to rub off with your fingers, but it's also really hard to paint on top of it because that surface is still kind of slick and oily. So I'm gonna varnish it with some ultra matte, lock all that in, uniform all of the finish on the model so that we can go into our detail steps. And so far, I'm really liking how this model is looking out. Uh, other than his base, this is a table-ready model. Like He looks ready for the table. He's He's got all of his base colors. He's got some hyper highlights. He's got the shade on there. Everything looks great, but we are going to take it to that final step. We're going to go in in our next video and do all of our super clean details and get this to a fully finished display level hero character. I'll see you next time.